Cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, I'd like to start this presentation with a little thought, with a little exercise for you. Think what you were doing in summer of 2002. Just a couple of seconds. Maybe you remember, maybe some of you bought the house. Some of you, I was asking yesterday people, some of you stopped going to university. Um, so once you have that, I'll get to the point where some people were thinking about changing the GIS word back then. Gary Sherman in Alaska um, wanted to have something to visualize post-GIS data. He was already using post-GIS things, and um, well, he couldn't see the, his vector. So what he thought is like, well, I should build a tool that allows me to do exactly that. And what you see here is the release note of the very first version of what back then was called quantum GIS. Uh, in version um, 0 0.0.1 on uh, 21st July um, of 2002. So this year we are obviously um, having our big birthday of turning 20. And uh, that is why I thought, well, this presentation, I could uh, try to go and explain a little bit what happened in, in, uh, in all those years. And I'm really happy because finally I'll have a presentation in a big auditorium where I can put up kittens and puppies. So <laughs> bear with me. That's, uh, that's um, yeah. And um, let's go. Um, 2003 was um, the very first versions coming out. I'm showing here the, um, the Italian Wikipedia uh, because um, they have much better listing of all the versions that came out. If you go to the English Wikipedia, we have a very bad listing there. So people that speak English and Italian, please go translate that so that we get that in English as well. Uh, plenty of versions coming out or have a very, very low version number um, with all the alphas and, uh, and all those kind of things. Um, here we were adding uh, a bit of stability, a bit of uh, small bugs already. Um, you were able to um, set the width of lines. Um, you could use zoom in and zoom out because at the very beginning there was no panning, no zoom. It was just showing you whatever your table was, uh, was having. And then, this is not working. It's all blocked. <laughs> there you go. And um, eventually, um, at version two, uh, sorry, at version 0 0.2, we started, or we, I wasn't part then, back then, but the QGIS project obviously, started creating change logs because just having those little messages um, in the um, kind of fresh meat back then, SourceForge, that was where QGIS was living, um, was turning, it was, was not really visible, and back then, um, Tim Sutton started doing the, the QGIS change log um, where they, they were putting whatever came in each and every version. And if we have a look here, we start seeing raster layers and uh, plugins being mentioned. So things that, uh, that nowadays we use uh, all the time, but back then were, were really, really the new things. And then finally, in 2004, they decided that they needed splash screens. Um, when you turn on QGIS nowadays, you get this really slick, um, greenish uh, themed uh, splash screen that is dedicated to a city um, with old maps and it's a really something polished uh, that we, we have to thank Anita for. Uh, back then, I mean, it was a, a, a cool, um, easygoing, grassroots project where um, all the developers got to tell which of their puppy they wanted to have on a splash screen, and then each and every version, we got, uh, we got new releases. So it all started with Madison. Um, don't ask me whose puppies these are. I, I didn't figure that out. Um, but if we look at the background map, we can maybe do some thinking, and that might have been Gary's um, dog, being Alaska in the background. Then uh, we moved to baby. <laughs> Uh, which was a mouse on a mouse. Um, <laughs> well, that's apparently what it was. Um, yeah, uh, no idea about baby. Then we moved to Bandit, which I think must have been Marcus Ugentobler's dog, 
because of the map in the background, but I forgot to ask him when I saw him last time, and I was, uh, yeah. And then we get to my very favorite, um, Simon. Um, this is the first splash screen I ever saw of QGIS. That's when I started working with QGIS back in, or oh, where I started touching QGIS for the very first time back in 2004. So um, I remember opening it up, it's like, oh, uh, okay, there's a dog. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And um, eventually I kept on using it and then and, and came to, to where I am now. I promise cats as well. There was only Seamus. And um, Seamus was already turning into something a bit more polished, a bit, uh, you know, a bit slicker, where we, we already have this big uh, brand, Quantum GIS, and Seamus specifically brought reprojection on the fly. So with QGIS, um, that was, we are talking about version 0 0.7 in 2005, um, we have here reprojection, so our data sets can have different coordinate system, and we can just uh, put the, the little checks box, um, reproject them on the flight, and they'll get this super neat kind of thing where you, um, you don't have to care about projections. In 2006, um, Gary and, and, and the others realized that we needed infrastructure. So obviously we started a mailing list, and the first thing you do when you set up a mailing list is obviously you send out a test email to see that it goes to everybody. Um, that's what got here. And then um, in 2007, we moved on. Uh, beside the mailing list, uh, there was also the first ticket filed in, in the truck um, um, ticket system. I was really in doubt if to show the first test ticket, which said, this is a test ticket and we are closing it and then reopening and then closing it or showing the test email. Uh, uh, but apparently in QGIS, we are transparent about bugs since 2007, which is a very good thing because so you know what you, uh, what you can uh, do and you cannot do and where you can help out. 2007 is then where um, um, Python bindings started appearing, so what uh, some of you, if you're doing Python development, already know a lot. Um, that's when they date back to the first versions. Um, and also the OSGO 4W, uh, where um, it's when it started back then. So the distribution for, for um, the new distribution system for Windows. In 2008, and that's uh, a long time ago already, uh, OpenGIS graduated from the OSGO program. So uh, you see, um, already there, um, there was a mature community behind it, all the, the, the guidelines that are given by OSGO to become a graduated project uh, are pretty strict. So, so the, the project was built up from the beginning with the idea of having a community behind and, and, uh, and then to have it grow. And in 2009, finally, um, people got to meet each other physically for the first time. Um, and if you look at this picture, I'm um, um, take this again. Oop, it disturbs. Uh, if you look at this picture, you see a lot of people that are in this room still. Um, they just look slightly older, but basically they look the same. Um, and, and that is a really cool commitment to, or a cool thing to see because it means that the project has been a very good place to be at work at. It has been a really cool place to be as a community, so very welcoming, very, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, very welcoming community where people like to hang around. And obviously, and you'll see at the end, this, the picture, the latest pictures look just a little bit bigger. Then, um, as on the naming, I was mentioning before, yeah, we had the pads, and then it turns into something a little bit more slick, and then uh, basically between 2007 and 2010, we went on and called QGIS according to moons in our solar system. Um, until version 1.5.0, which was supposed to be called Tetis, and someone tried to tell us that we were not really allowed to use that name, they would want to sue us, uh, whatever, so we quickly, uh, moved away from that name and decided to move to places in the world. Back then there was a big accident in a mine in Copiapo and we decided to, to kind of uh, dedicate the, this, this version uh, to, to that. 
In the change to cities uh, was also when we, we were all obviously doing all our hackfests. Uh, back then they were still called hackfests. Nowadays we call them contributor meetings. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, the, the, the people were always obviously being creative and coming to, to different places of, of the world. And eventually in 2012, we started preparing for something very big. In um, Lisbona, um, that was where we did the last ACFES before, before this release. Um, all the work was kind of to build up the next big release of, uh, of QGIS. And that is, when, uh, that is what happened in 2013 with QGIS 2.0 Dufour. That's when kind of things really started turning for QGIS from um, not a niche, I'm not going to say a niche project, but into something that where really a lot of people were trying to use it, which then, well, didn't culminate yet, but it grew basically exponentially from them. And here you see um, all the, the releases we did were dedicated to Hackfest we did. So we went a bit around in, uh, in Europe um, to know the boat for the first uh, user. Um, group, uh, not, not only user, sorry, but, um, well, yeah, QGIS user conference, a huge kind of thing that Lene organized. Um, so here all the, the, the 2.0 line was, um, was a pretty big, uh, big thing, and that was announced uh, back in 2013 in Nottingham by Tim Sutton at, for Maybe some of you were at that Phosphor-G there where all people were up all night and singing. And, and Tim back then also announced that QGIS was available for Android. And that made me obviously extremely proud because I did that work. Uh, but it shows basically that, um, that already back then we were considering technologies that nowadays are very relevant. So it's always been this kind of eye for, for looking forward in, in QGIS. And then um, around 2014, that's when we started uh, institutionalizing a little bit um, QGIS with the first budget report in 2014. And then following in 2015, um, QGIS.org was born. QGIS.org is the um, association that manages uh, or manages that, that tries to help out the project to, to move in, in uh, smoother water, something a little bit similar to what um, Avon is doing, uh, also getting sponsorship uh, and uh, sustaining membership um, with uh, country members uh, that have voting rights and then community members that have voting rights and those are really like the members of the association which are taking the decision within the community when it goes to, to decision making. In 2015 was also the time when Gary um, decided to step down from the PSC um, and handed over the whole thing to Tim Sutton, uh, which was then very, uh, was key person to build up the whole uh, QGS.org association and get all this this, um, what I just showed before, um, this, this infrastructure in place for the community to be able to thrive and grow and being inclusive. 2015, much more importantly, was also the inflection point where QGS turned into, according to a very well-known um, search engine, uh, into way more interesting than um, our commercial or our uh, proprietary counterpart. Um, Google Trends um, tell us a little bit about what people are looking for. And uh, yeah, 2015 was definitely that day where worldwide um, the interest grew. It doesn't look like this for all the countries, obviously. There are countries that that inflection point is way earlier, and there are countries that haven't seen that inflection point yet. But, um, but I think it's, it's pretty cool to see that it was already back in 2015. <laughs> Two thousand and sixteen was um, the first time that we realized, well, we have founding coming in, we have companies, we have uh, people doing feature development. Um, features are kind of easy to to be sold to potential clients, 
Um, but we do have a lot of things that need to work on, very similar to what Evan said before, uh, that are really hard to maintain because they are either boring, difficult, uh, or you're just stretched too thin. And that's when, um, that's always been what we wanted with our uh, so sponsoring program, back then it was still called sponsoring program, to, to get money in so that we could actually work on this kind of um, of things, and that's why we created a grant program for people to come up with proposals that were really hard to sell to clients and to get that do them founded by the QGS.org association themselves. So in this case, somebody would come up with a proposal when we do a call for grants, <coughs> and um, the community will vote on the proposals that they would like to get approved in the, within the budget, and then it gets implemented. So that's really a thing, cool thing that uh, there's been uh, creating very interesting things in the project. 2017 was a little bit of the server year. That's when QGIS server um, got um, the first OGC <coughs> uh, compliance for WMS. Um, from that it grew into WFS, WMTS, and, and all, all the other OGC uh, that you can think of. And finally, in 2018, we moved into the 3.0 series. The 3.0 series uh, was tied with um, a big change in the API, a big break in API, so um, the plugin developers here know that they had to do some work to get their plugins to work again, but it was also uh, tied to a lot of cleanup um, and, and um, a really renewal of everything that was setting behind, um, behind QGIS. 2019, um, and here I was looking really at, uh, at kind of what happens in the code, and there was just so much things happening uh, because the, the, gro the growth has been, has been crazy in the last years, and I really had a hard time figuring out what is that I should be putting for 2019, and I couldn't come up with one slide that was, uh, was like really standing out uh, from, from other places, and, and then I realized, well, well, there's been all those communication things growing. There's been um, um, a Telegram group that was created, which now has like I, something like 2,500 users. There is a, a community on Facebook that has been uh, created and now has 55,000 users. There have been user group growing all over the world. Uh, we currently have with 27 countries. So. I thought, well, 19 was really kind of the year where things were, were, were growing in the communication side or where people were communicating, where all these tutorials online, books have been written. Uh, so it was really a year where I could not just pick something out of the technical part of QGIS and I thought, well, there is much more than a technical part. There's all those things happening around QGIS that, uh, that are really crucial to the project. And then luckily they happened in 2019, when life was still very normal. And in 2020, when um, we had to cancel all our Hackfest, we were kind of a little bit more ready to just move into uh, a remote-only way of meeting where, uh, where we were discussing, um, discussing on a non-physical way to, with people, which was sad, but at least it worked. And that's also when um, Tim and myself were thinking, well, we need to do something uh, to, to push it even more and, and then discuss with more people and came up with this QGIS open day, which happens every last Friday of the month. And there are always people of the community coming there and telling us um, um, all kind of amazing things about what they are doing. And that year was also the year uh, where we set a new environmental policy. Um, together with all our inclusive statement and, and our um, code of conduct, which were put in the QGIS project, I think, back seven or eight years ago already. So um, this was just uh, the last step of our code of conduct to uh, in going into um, evolving. And in 2021, um, remember QGIS is turning 20, but the mobile part of uh, one of the mobile apps is is turning 10 already, and currently there are more apps like Input and, and Roam that, that are growing as well, so that, that really shows you how, how big uh, this project is actually going. 
And this is, by the way, the first thing that QGIS threw at me as soon as I could see it 10 years ago. It's like, is it QGIS or quantum GIS? I was like, OK, well, whatever. Um, and as I said, we're now turning 20. Uh, we came in a big group to, to Florence last week. We had uh, at the university our latest contributor meeting. A um, lot of new faces, lots of old faces. It was really cool to see people again and, uh, and had a good time. Um, and lo really looking forward to the next release of QGIS in October, which is going to be called Firenze um, 328. And to manage all this, um, to get this community to thrive more and more, we have a sustaining membership program. And that is something, as Evan was saying before, um, one-time donations are really good, but we do need to look into more um, long-term sustainability of the community and the project. And that is why uh, becoming a sustaining member of the QGS.org project is something that really helps us out, because it helps exactly funding those kind of things that need to be done all the time and nobody really likes doing. On that, I'd like to thank everybody for helping out in the QGS community, for um, doing for, for organizing for 4G, a really great event. Uh, thanks a lot.